And I'm joined now by Dr. Mika Werner, Associate Professor in Drought and Flood Management at the IHE Delft Institute for Water Education. Um, thank you very much, Professor, for, for joining us today on BBC News. And you're based Morning. in the Netherlands, uh, a famously low-lying country. So what can the UK and indeed other countries learn from how you manage flood risk there? Thank you. Good morning. Um, indeed, as you mentioned, yeah. Uh, so the Netherlands here, where, where where I am now, is is indeed famous for for managing floods over the centuries. And uh, as you may know, we we about a third of the country is below sea level. And um, and I think managing floods and flood risk has been very high on the agenda in this country. Um, but. I think also what's, what's interesting, you know, traditionally we've had a very strong focus here on, on building flood defences such as dikes and um, trying to keep the water out. But slowly you see that 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 we're changing our, our paradigm to that. So we're thinking, well, how do we actually learn to live with floods? And um, at times giving space back to, to rivers. Um, I think that's that's been a quite famous programme in the, in the floods community of sort of... Um, providing room for the rivers, which is quite difficult in this country because we're a very densely populated country. So it's it's balancing where we provide space to, uh, for the rivers to flood and um but also space uh, spaces that we that we you know choose to protect where we you know try to reduce flooding and just as in the report i think very you know essential to our approach is also this provision of of flood forecasting and and mm -hmm. and warning just in case flood defences do get over top, that we can, you know, um, have an adequate response. So, so how possible is it to live in a flood risk area? It's really interesting mm. to hear what you were just saying mm. uh, at time. Space, if possible, needs to be given back to rivers to allow mm. them to, uh, to expand, to extend. So is it possible to live in a flood risk area? Because obviously uh, there's a lot of focus, isn't there, on uh, architecture, on how you build mm. flood uh, houses suitable for floodplains and so forth. Right. Um, yeah, I suppose. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, uh, the, you know, the, where I'm sitting, my, my house is at minus two meters or two meters below sea level, um, but I'm on the first floor, so nothing to worry about. Um, so, in a sense, you would think I'm in a in a in a in a let's say in a, in a flood risk area. Um, but of course, you know, I live in this area because I, I I think that we've managed the floods to an acceptable level, or the flood risk to an acceptable level. And I think that's that's an important dimension, this question of what is acceptable. So in some places, you know, you know many communities that we live in are in flood risk areas, um, could be at risk to different types of flooding, you know, whether from the rivers or even in mountainous areas, we see uh, flash floods. So it's I think it's always a, a choice of understanding floods. And I think the work that that um, or understanding flood risk, the work that the University of Bristol does and is doing is, is essential to that understanding. But then also a sort of a societal debate of um, how can we adapt to, to flooding? Um, can we live with flooding? As you also mentioned, you know, building houses in a way that we can deal better with flood, uh, flood risk. In, in the Netherlands, we also have some examples of floating houses in areas where that, that flood more. So yes, they can live with floods. And you also see across the world um, areas such as in the Mekong Delta, where houses regularly flood, but they're, they're built on poles. So they they adapt to that situation. And I think that's a very important aspect of, you know, learning to live in this changing climate with climate variability that increasingly we have to accept that the climate is variable and increasingly will become so. So adapting to that and um, not just on the flood side, but also on the drought side. I think that's also interesting here in the Netherlands that we, okay. we come to understand that traditionally we're trying to get rid of that water, but now some of the hot, dry summers we're having means that we need to keep hold of that water. So we need to balance sort of the risks on one side of the spectrum with our risks on the other side of the yeah. spectrum. So really the sort of... A Dr. Sorry, Mika yeah. Werner, really, really fast. We are out of time, unfortunately. I could uh, uh, spend much longer talking to you about that, though. Thank it's you. a re really fascinating discussion. Dr. Mika Werner there uh, at the IHE Delft Institute in the Netherlands.